We're going to be talking about ServiceNow and the Ansible automation platform. Now, no one really wants to sit and open and close tickets their whole lives. And this is where, you know, if we integrate these tools together, we're able to bring a full closed loop automation and ultimately have full lifecycle management through ServiceNow and Ansible. So we're going to dive into this. Now, the key thing here is we're going to touch on some really basic use cases. These are entry level getting started use cases that you could adopt already today. And ultimately, you know, if we're looking at these one by one, they don't seem like much. But when we start to introduce them into your bigger automation workflows, this is where we really see the value. So let's dive straight into it. So I've got my automation platform here and uh, we have a couple of templates already for us. And the first one we're going to touch on is a template about getting information. So before we look at that, let's dive into our automation hub. This is where we have our certified content. And as you can see, we have a certified collection for service now. So this is all the modules that we have, which are supported and certified with us that you could actually use to work with your service now platform. So if you have a look at the contents, you can see there's plenty of modules to actually work with. And today we're just going to be concentrating on ticketing. Yes, ServiceNow is much bigger than that, just like Ansible, but we're going to focus on the very simple function of ticketing. So think about it this way. What happens if there's a ticket in place and we need to get that information? Well, that could be a very simple uh, use case for Ansible where we can actually trigger a playbook to talk to ServiceNow to get the information around that ticket and ultimately do something with that information. So think about this. If we put this into an automation workflow for, let's say, to deploy software or to deploy the latest version of a container on our infrastructure, that information could actually be sitting inside of a service ticket. And part of our automation workflow would be to query the service ticket, filter out for that information we need, and obviously use that in the next stage of automation. So let's just go look at this very basic sample. So if I go to have a look at here on my automation controller, I can go into my templates and let me just move over to my next set here. You can see that I have a template that's all about getting ticket info. So I'm going to trigger this guy here and I already have a ticket to work with. So I'm going to put in my ticket number here and we can query this. So now we're going to run a playbook and ultimately this is going to service now specifically around that ticket. Let me have all that information and then it's going to present us that information. So we can see the jobs now completed and we have our payload here. So if we dive into this payload, obviously we have a ton of information and then we can see that this ticket was actually a networking issue. So it's a networking ticket. It's got uh, some kind of BGP error, etc. And that's it. So this simple task of getting that ticket information, think about all the use cases of this. So in this instance, a network situation, maybe we could filter for the fact that it's a BGP error uh, and we could either go through a troubleshooting process where we can get Ansible in the next phase of the workflow to run a BGP, maybe a deployment of a source of truth. Maybe we wanted to go and actually check specifically on the neighbor switches, all these types of things. But we're able to drive this because we're able to get that information out of a service ticket. Okay, so now let's look at the other example, which is pretty simple. The other example is what about just creating tickets? Pretty basic, right? So we want to be able to just create a ticket. And, you know, obviously I can go and create tickets through the automation platform. That doesn't really change anything. It doesn't change my life. But imagine this now in a bigger scope. Imagine we're doing a multi-stage network upgrade or we're doing upgrades on our application loads. And should something fail, well, we want to be able to handle that. So part of a failure uh, condition inside of like a workflow could be create a service ticket. And this is where this type of thing would be would be ideal. So let's go and just run this as an example. We're going to go and create this. I'm just going to say uh, this is a test. All right, and we can submit that. And now we're gonna go and do this. So this should go and go create basically that ticket. Now remember, again, very simple use case, but in the bigger scheme of things, this could be incredibly powerful in terms of notifying your teams what's going on during your different application deployments or perhaps provisioning or anything that you're automating at scale. So let's go have a look to see our service platform here. If we go and we refresh service now, we should have a brand new ticket. There we go. So the ticket's been created. That's all we needed to do. All right. So in my last example here, we're going to do something a little bit different, right? 
This is where we're talking about ticket enrichment. And why this is different? Well, sure, we can create a ticket, we can update a ticket, we can gather ticket details like we've seen. But part of the power between you know, using ServiceNow and Ansible is the fact that Ansible is a multi-domain automation tool. So apart from the fact that it can orchestrate um, and work with different tools from that perspective, because we can dive into different domains, we can talk to network environments, storage, infrastructure, cloud, this means that we have quite a big grasp in terms of being able to gather information. Now, imagine you want to go and um, enrich a ticket where the network has failed. So someone has logged a ticket to say network failure. Cool. That's great to know, but we don't really have anything else. And typically we would have to go and talk to our teams to go and find out information. But we could codify that. We could tell Ansible to go and get all this information for us and enrich that service ticket so that now our teams already have everything at hand and they can dive immediately into actually resolving the issue. So this is a really powerful technique. We use this quite a bit in event-driven Ansible because it's a very easy use case, but it has massive return on investment in terms of being able to help your teams and get that information to your teams quickly um, and obviously consistently. So for us to do this, I'm going to actually leverage something on uh, some Red Hat products there. We're going to have the Red Hat Insights product where uh, we're able to scan for vulnerabilities, etc. I've got that running and obviously I have an environment and we're going to go and have a look specifically for a, let's say, infosec type of use case. I've been notified that there's a CVE in my environment. I don't know anything about it. I don't necessarily want to log into Insights. Maybe I don't have access because I'm not looking after that environment, but we're going to be able to get the information to our teams, right? So we're going to do that. So we're going to go now and dive into our um, Insights. Let's go pick a vulnerability. And then from there, I can show you how we're going to get that information. We're going to push it into ServiceNow, enriching that ticket effectively. Really easy to do. Okay, so we have our insights here, right? We can see we've got a system sitting inside of insights and we can now go and navigate to see our advisory. So we're gonna choose our content. We're gonna dive into advisories. And here we will have a list of advisories that are affecting our specific systems. So we can choose any of these. Now remember, you know, from an infosec scenario, which is kind of what we're playing here, uh, they might not have access to these tool sets. Uh, this could be part of an automated self-healing workflow where perhaps Insights notifies event-driven Ansible. Event-driven Ansible can then query fact gathering or information gathering around the CVEs on the affected hosts. And from there, we can drive multiple automated uh, scenarios, right? We could build the affected inventories. We can uh, use Insights to build automated remediation, all these things. We're not touching on that. What we're looking at is just tick and enrichment because this is an easy use case to get started. So we can look at these, we can look at any of these, right? So I'm gonna decide, uh, I'm gonna pick this guy here and I'm just gonna select it. Now let's go back to our automation controller where we have a template that's ready and we'll have here this template CVE. Now it's asking me, cool, what is the advisory? Well, we knew what the advisory is, it's that one. And ultimately, it wants to know what my credentials are to actually access the service. Likewise, we want to be able to talk to the APIs, gather the information for our ticketing system, and then, you know, provide that. So I'm going to log in here. I'm going to provide the details here. Okay, so I've got the details there. And now we're going to just trigger this job. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use Ansible to talk to Insights, to do all the lookups that we need, to find the information about that specific host that's now been affected based on the advisory ID. And then we're going to create a service ticket and we're going to embed all of that valuable information for our technical teams, right? So our InfoSec can now go and see this ticket and see how it's been enriched with this detail. So let's go have a look at service now and we can now refresh. And we should see a brand new incident now, a new support ticket that's come through. Okay, there we see there's one that's come through, which is a CVE, which is what we were doing. Let's go have a look at that ticket, right? So now we have gone and we've created a ticket. And part of that ticket is we've gone and actually gathered a bunch of information around 
the specific CVE. Now, this is stuff we've gathered from external tools, right? So you can see here, there's the description of the CVE. We've got a bug fix report there. We even have the access to the knowledge base that we can go and look about it, right? So we've been able to gather all of this with Ansible and provide it to the ticketing system. So our teams can now be aware of that. So even though we're dealing here for insights, because Ansible is multi-domain, the, the idea is the same. You know, whether it's a third-party vulnerability scanner and you're querying that, whether it's querying devices on the network and pulling that information together, with Ansible, we're able to get that through, we're able to filter it, and we're able to provide that into a service now, ticket and ultimately enriching the ticket for our teams and allowing our teams to have all the information they need so they can actually start working on the problem as opposed to trying to go find this information. So yes, these are three simple use cases you can get started just for ticketing alone and bringing them into your automation workflows will basically multiply what you're trying to do with ServiceNow and start to work with that full lifecycle closed loop automation that we keep talking about.